Oh, no new Macs until 2023. Oh, it's the best news ever. So according to Apple leaker extraordinaire Mark Gurman, we're not going to see any more new Macs this year. So there's not going to be a Mac Mini, a new MacBook Pro, a new Mac Pro. I'll get to that in a bit. That's it. And that comes after what is easily the weirdest iPad launch in recent memory. And that also makes the M2 MacBook Air the last new Mac that we will see in 2022. And that's had quite a troubled upbringing as well. Regardless, this is the best news I've had in the last few weeks. And I'm going to explain why today. Firstly, a very quick word from today's sponsor, which is NordVPN. This is a very quick, easy one to talk about, thankfully. You have the internet over here, and you have you sat in a coffee shop over here. And then over there, there somewhere there's someone who wants to steal your data. Now what a VPN does is sit in that middle bit and stop that idiot over there nicking your stuff. I install NordVPN on all of my Macs, all of my iPads, and it's the fastest VPN I've found. It's also the most cost effective. It's about the price of a cup of coffee each month. Also if you go abroad for the weekend or on holiday you can use NordVPN to connect to your home country and access home country content. I do that sometimes for BBC iPlayer and stuff like that. So the combination of that and the ability ability to stop that horrible person in the corner stealing my stuff, which doesn't happen very often, but it's nice to have that peace of mind. But having all of that, like I say, for the price of about a cup of coffee each month is fantastic. So if you'd like to check out NordVPN, click the link in my description. Okay, so if you haven't seen the news from Mark Gurman yet, I'll kind of summarise it for you. But in the latest edition, he mentions that the current strategy for Apple when it comes to Macs is to introduce the upgraded models, so that's the M2-based versions of the 14-inch and 16-inch MacBook Pros, in the first quarter calendar of 2023. He also points out that Apple doesn't normally release new hardware in January or February, so that means it's going to be March before we see new Macs. And these rumours do seem to have some grounding. The chief, let me get this title, right sorry Apple's chief financial officer who is Luca Maestri he's expecting the revenue growth for Max in this last quarter of the year to slow and the reason for that he tells us is because there's not going to be any big MacBook Pro launch like there was in 2021 so last year last October when Apple launched the brand new 14 inch and 16 inch MacBook Pros they saw quite a big uplift in sales I would argue that putting M2 Pro and M2 Max chips into the current MacBook Pro design wouldn't be a big launch anyway. If they did that next week, it's not going to be a huge fanfare. It's going to be more power, more performance. That's about it. But I do think Mark Gurman is on point with this. I don't think we're going to see anything else this year from Apple. The reason that's good news for me, it's two reasons really. One of them is because it means I can save some money. I can invest more money in this studio rather than buying new Macs. And secondly, I can get some sleep and not go hell for leather with all of these reviews. And the other thing is, it gives me two opportunities for new things to do in this studio and on this channel, which I'd like to talk about today. There's one Mac that I'm desperately waiting to be updated, and that is the Mac Mini. This is my M1 Mac Mini, my 16 gigabyte, 512 gig Mac Mini that I pretty much built this business on. It means an awful lot to me, but at the moment it's not really being used, which is criminal, I know, but there have been numerous rumors about what this new version of the Mac Mini is gonna look like, what it's gonna have inside it, and I can't wait. But I don't just wanna buy a new version of this computer for the sake of it. I need to do something interesting interesting with it, it needs to have a defined role within this studio. Now regular viewers may remember me talking occasionally about music production. It's something that I've done since I was about 12 or 13 years old. I'm not a music producer, I've never made music that has been released, obviously, but I do it for fun, for my own enjoyment. And whenever I mention this, it always gets picked up by a bunch of you guys. You want to know what software I use, what plugins I use, how I go about making music. I want to start answering those questions, which brings me to this desk here. This is a bit of a waste ground. So it's got the Mac Mini on there, it's got my ultra wide 34 inch monitor, it's got some other bits and pieces that I don't really use at all. And the idea that I had when I heard about the potential of a new Mac Mini in November or December this year, I thought brilliant, what I'll do is get that new Mac Mini and make it the centerpiece of a brand new audio production station. Now I probably can't do that now with the new Mac Mini because we're not going to see the new Mac Mini if it ever arrives until next March, potentially. But that doesn't matter because I've got a perfectly good M1 Mac Mini here. What I'm going to do is make this the centerpiece for the time being of my new music production studio. And I'm going to share the journey with you in terms of setting it up, building the configuration here, and using it. And then if we do see a new Mac Mini next year, 
this will get swapped for that. That makes me quite sad, but also it gives me the opportunity, I think, to do a little giveaway with this. So if that happens next year, you have my word that I will run a giveaway on this original Mark Ellis Reviews Mac Mini for someone to win. So stay tuned for that. Make sure you subscribe, hit the bell so you don't miss it. And more importantly, this news that Apple probably won't be giving us any new Macs this year, it gives me that precious time to do stuff with this area. I'm going to share that journey with you and I can't wait. I think you're going to enjoy it. The second opportunity this gives me relates to this, which is the... It's not that heavy. The 16 inch MacBook Pro. I wrote a blog about this a little while ago, which I'll link to in the description, but it basically told the story of me lugging this thing around London. I had this, I had camera gear, I had an M2 MacBook Air, but the only one that I wanted to chuck into the River Thames was this. Don't get me wrong, I loved it. I'm gonna have to put it down. I love this laptop. It's the most powerful, production laptop or computer I've ever owned. But I'm traveling more now and it's not a travel laptop. It's too heavy, it doesn't fit on the normal economy class trays on planes or trains. In fact, it doesn't fit on any table that I found in a coffee shop if you want your coffee on the table at the same time. So on that hot, sweaty day in London, I hatched a plan. And that plan was based on the fact that we were gonna see new 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pros this year. And what I thought I'd do is get the 14 inch version and run that as a test against the 16 inch version as a travel laptop. And I'd probably get the base model version, the base M2 Pro or whatever it was gonna be, and just see if I could live with a smaller screen and potentially less power. Now that plan needs to be shelved because we're not gonna see those MacBook Pros for another three or four months, whatever it's gonna be. The other thing that compounds all of this is the fact that the iPad Pro, the new one, the one that I'm sending back, if you missed that video, I'll put a link above, that still has nothing going for it in terms of being a mobile video production system for Final Cut Pro. If it did, that would solve all my problems. I wouldn't need to take this with me anywhere. I wouldn't even need that 14 inch MacBook Pro. But Apple still hasn't pulled its finger out with Final Cut Pro on the iPad, so that's not an option either. So I need to carry on either carting this thing around while I'm traveling or try out the M2 MacBook Air that I've got, the base model, as a kind of on-the-go, in a pinch video editing system. I'll report back on that, but I will definitely be getting the next 14 inch MacBook Pro, giving you a full review of it, and just seeing if it's worth switching to from the big one. There's one big question that this news from Mark Gurman raises, which is what's happened to the new Mac Pro? Now, if we go back to 2020, when the first M1 chips were launched, Apple told us that they had a two year plan to transition all of their Macs over to Apple Silicon. Now we're pretty much hitting that two year mark now. We've got new iMacs, we've got new MacBook Pros, we've got new Mac Mini, we've got the new MacBook Air. All of those Macs have Apple Silicon. If you buy a Mac Pro today, it's still Intel based. These new rumors suggest that either one, they've decided to shelve it, which I think is probably unlikely, or two, they're gonna break that two year promise. Do either of those things matter? Well, the first one does, because I'd imagine a lot of people are waiting on the Apple Silicon version of the Mac Pro. And if they have broken that promise, although a little caveat with that, two years ago when they put the press release out about this two year transition, they used the word about, they said about two years, which they've built in some leeway there. But if they are going beyond that because of the Mac Pro, it does raise some interesting questions. Is it because of the chip shortage? Are there production problems? Have they changed their direction, their idea for it? Who knows? Answers on a postcard. So no new Macs this year, but there have been new iPads. And if you want to find out why I bought the 12.9 inch M2 iPad Pro only to return it pretty much straight away, keep watching for a link to that video.